Liv, I'm going to share with you today a project that I cannot take credit for. This idea was given to me by Kelsey Doty of Kansas State University in their apparel and textile department. We have a fabric store and in the process of cutting fabric, there are always loose threads that are coming off of the fabric and we had just kind of been collecting them and sticking them into a little jar that was on the counter at the shop. Uh, mostly just to keep it from being always all over our clothing and always all over the floor. We'd had some customers come in and take it to use as stuffing. We would end up with just piles and piles of thread in these jars. And so uh, Kelsey came in and asked if she could have some of this thread and see if she could spin it. And then she came back with this beautiful yarn. I immediately wanted to replicate it. And it just so happens that I come from a family of hand spinners and pretty much have access to a spinning wheel whenever I want. Uh, I can just borrow one from my mom. So this is an Ashford traditional. It is kind of their entry level standard spinning wheel. It's a good, reliable, high quality piece of equipment and pretty readily available, both used and new. So if you're trying to find one, I mean, it is somewhat expensive. You might have to save up for it, but it's reachable. So here we go. Normally when you spin, the fiber comes to you, either if you purchase it ready-made, this is called a roving, and it's basically ready to spin. You just slowly pull this out and let it twist up into yarn. And that's what half of this yarn is made of, but the other half is made of this wadded up clump of thread. So because it's not smoothly combed out and it's really not possible to smoothly comb it out, it's just going to make lumpy yarn, which is totally fine with me because I think that just adds more interest and texture to the final product. So you just start spinning. And I say that like it's super easy. This particular project is more of an advanced thing. This would make a beginner completely frustrated. Um, it takes quite a bit of practice and um, skill to reach a level where you can do something like this. Um, when you first start out, you wanna pick a fiber that's really easy to spin up kind of like this um, merino blend I have over here that's all carded and combed and ready to go. As it is, I am making a very lumpy, bumpy, rainbow, beautiful thread. So this takes hours and hours and hours. I don't even know how long I've spent on this. I think to spin the white and the rainbow, I think I've got at least four hours just to get one spool of each. And you just listen to the soothing sounds of the spinning wheel. Or if you're like me, you put on a podcast or watch Netflix. It gets to be something where when you're when you're better at it, you can almost do it by feel and you don't have to watch your fingers closely the whole time. So this spool is almost full. And once it is finished, I will do the next step in the process, which is called plying, which is when you take the two strands and twist them together. Much like sewing, spinning is one of these activities where you really need to pay attention to your posture and take a lot of breaks because you're kind of crumpling in upon yourself and slouching over and it can become really bad for your back. Uh, so I try to make sure I take a lot of breaks. I'm not necessarily good at it, but I know I should be taking a lot of breaks and I try to do posture checks as I'm working. Uh, another thing that helps to just kind of keep you fresh and from fatiguing your muscles too much is to switch feet for pedaling, which can take a little bit of getting used to. I am very right hand dominant, but I try to switch to my left foot as much as I can to sort of help balance out the wear and tear and exercise that is happening. This is no longer pulling into the machine, which means it's stuck somewhere. Yep, that big slubby bit got stuck. All right. Kind of lose track of how long I've been doing things. I learned how to spin when I was about 12. 
my mom, when I was about 12, um, decided she wanted to have Angora rabbits and spin her own yarn. And so the two things sort of happened at the same time. She got her first bunny named Willow um, and her first spinning wheel right about the same time. And almost as soon as she started, I jumped in as well. I was very interested in this whole process. And so she taught me to spin. I immediately started making really ugly yarn, just horribly ugly. <laughs> um, and that never really got used for anything, which is kind of what happens in the learning process. There's a lot of projects. I have to remind myself that projects, um, the learning process means a lot of things you just throw away. And the, the sustainability side of me which kind of hates that. But I also have to remember you have to learn somehow and making a lot of bad stuff is part of the learning process. Sometimes you can salvage it. I know I tried over dyeing my really ugly yarn at one point, and I think I, I started and stopped several different knitting projects with that yarn, um, but I don't think I ever finished any of them. That yarn might still be floating around my mom's house somewhere. I hope not. <laughs> it was also really itchy. It was not good yarn. mesmerizing to watch the different colors get swirled in and take over. I love kind of recognizing different fabrics because some of these are very distinctive colors and I know exactly what fabric they came from. I can be like, oh, I loved that one. Well, we still have that one in the shop. Lately I've just been um, putting the day's worth of strings from cutting fabric into my pocket and I'll get home at night and just put my daily, my daily clump of string into the basket. Depending on the day, there are different sizes of clumps. <laughs> Depends on what I do that day. If there's a lot of cutting of fabric, then I have a giant pocket full. I mean, this amount right here is almost a day's worth. So I think I'm gonna stop here. This spool looks pretty full. So, the way you stop is you just spin and let it go and it gets sucked up into the machine. So, we'll take this bobbin off. You can see how pretty that is. Beautiful colors, lovely kind of all the colors of the rainbow. So the next step is to take the white yarn. So this piece of equipment is called a lazy Kate and it's really just a, a bobbin holder, but it doesn't just hold your bobbins. It also um, plays a role in the next step, which is called plying. When you ply things, you're just gonna twist two, two strands together. So this white yarn is a blend that I got from the Shepherd's Mill. It is a fiber mill in Kansas, it's in Phillipsburg, Kansas. This is a 75% merino, 20% bamboo, and 5% nylon roving. It's a blend called Righteousness. It's a gorgeous white creamy color, very soft with the merino and the bamboo. And then that little 5% of nylon is in there just to, to add some sparkle. There's just a subtle sparkly fiber kind of throughout, that's just really pretty. So I called them up and just asked, what do you have? It's a, a neutral color blend that I could use. So love that. All right, this is the fun part. Well, now I have to find the end of the rainbow thread. It disappeared. There we go. All right. So you have to get both ends of thread coming out of the lazy cape. And you just put that off kind of to the side of yourself out of the way, we load up our next empty bobbin. This is a tension wire that goes over the back side of the bobbin to hold it, keep it from flying off. It also enables the, the bobbin to just kind of pull the, pull the thread in as I'm making it. 
And when you are plying, you need to go in the, you need to spin the wheel in the opposite direction that you spun it when you made the first yarns. When I spun these two threads, I spun the yarn in a clockwise direction by pushing the top of the wheel kind of away from me. So when I am plying the two threads together, I will need to go counterclockwise and bring the wheel toward me. If you don't do that, you just end up with a horribly, horribly twisted and gnarled mess. <laughs> so it's important to make sure you start out going the opposite direction. So let me thread this through. This is all manual. I know when I, before I started spinning, I thought that this like automatically fed itself back and forth along the bobbin, but what you have to do is loop it over the hooks. And when you see that it's getting full, you stop spinning and then you uh, move it to the next hook so that it doesn't get all stuck or get too full in one spot. Now, my habit is to go push the wheel away, but I need to push it toward me. I need to get this started wrapping around so it's not slipping. And then, then you have to get the two strands that you're trying to put into the wheel to twist together and attach to this strand. So usually that means I have to kind of pull it apart a little bit, like unspin it and make a hole or, you know, get somewhere that you can kind of attach your new thread. All right. So we're going to start spinning. If I can get these guys to just like each other enough. And since I'm going the opposite direction, the thread on the bobbin has to kind of untwist and then retwist in the other direction, which takes a little while. So this will take me a minute to get it going. It looks like we're off to a good start here. Seems to be catching pretty well. And yep, I think we'll see if it actually goes through. Please work. Once it's actually wrapped, oh, we're not quite there. Once it's actually wrapped onto the bobbin, then you're basically safe and you're good to go. So now this is kind of one of my favorite parts of spinning is the flying. Um, Cause it twists together and this is, this is the final yarn. This is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to adjust my tension and make it a little bit tighter. That will hold the bobbin more still and cause the yarn to, to pull on and spin on a little faster. Um, I needed the wheel to kind of pull it away from me faster than it was. So you just kind of have to adjust your tension until it's going at the speed that works for you. This is turning out absolutely gorgeous and I'm excited. I initially tried just taking the thread yarn and plying it with itself. So it was basically three strands of the thread yarn and it just, because it's cotton and mostly because it's cotton, but also just the nature of the fiber um, with it already being thread. It just wasn't very springy, wasn't very elastic. And so when I knitted a beanie out of it, it's like super floppy and didn't have any um, bounce back to it. Like it would stretch out, but then it would just stay stretched out and be kind of floppy. So I went back to the original, like what Kelsey, my inspiration did. Um, and, and now I'm plying it with the wool to kind of balance out the cotton. Oops, I think we're stuck. So when you're plying, especially if you're plying something really chunky and slubby, it can get stuck a lot. And you just, it's a lot more fiddly. When you do something that's slubby and complicated, then if you're just doing a nice smooth all wool fiber. But it's fun. I love this process. It's funny, I don't spin unless I have a, like an actual project I'm working on. My mom is like kind of addicted to it. It's her therapy, I think. Um, and so she just makes yarn even with no purpose. She just can't stop making yarn, which I understand because I'm not with quilts. I can't stop making quilts. I'm like, mom, sell your yarn. I think she's gonna start soon. Especially because like she's got the bunnies. You can like you can hear the names of the bunnies and see the wool they make and the yarn they make. It's very fun. I think this is gonna turn out really soft. This merino, the white part of the thread is dreamy soft. It's just lovely. And with this rainbow next to it, 
It's just turning out really nice. I am kind of in love. I don't know what I'm gonna make. I may, I may not make anything, we'll see. I might re maybe redo a beanie and maybe let my first beanie attempt go away. I love how colors I would never put together just end up sitting right next to each other. Like here's some turquoise and orange, which is not usually my jam, but it's so pretty. This, it doesn't get boring. <laughs> I don't get bored of this. I could watch colors play all day long. Right now the wheel, like I don't even need my other hand. I just need to keep the two, two threads feeding in. Um, the wheel is pulling the thread away from me and the tension's good so I can just like sit here oh these colors turquoise and fuchsia fun just do this one-handed make it look easy this part kind of is easy I suppose it's easy if you've been doing something for 30, holy cow, 30 years. I'm 42 and I started when I was 12. I've been spinning for 30 years. My mom has also been spinning for 30 years. She has way more hours put in than I do though. I don't actually spin very often at all. I took it back up just for this very specific project, but it is just like riding a bike. Muscle memory is a legit thing. And once you know how to do it, you know how to do it. I've always really liked chunky, slubby yarn, and my mom does like really uniform, more fine yarns. So it's kind of fun to see the different things we come up with using the same materials. This is turning out more pastel than I thought it would, which I like. I mean, I didn't really have any expectations. I just sort of thought it would look a little bit more saturated, but it's actually kind of subtle and I'm not mad about it. It looks like we're stuck. Something, yep, into the snag. All right. Just keep spinning. This is where um, I like to kind of imagine what people used to used to do. I'm sure this was more of a social activity. Now though, it's kind of a just a relaxing pastime that you can do with your podcasts or your audiobooks or your streaming. There is a, a meditative quality to this. You can also just kind of zen out because the repetitive sounds and the peaceful nature of it are pretty relaxing actually. So to end, we just break the threads, which is not easy because I'm amazing and I make super strong yarn. Okay. And then let that zip on in there. Okay. This is the finished product. So there it is, the finished yarn. Really, really pretty. This is upcycled thread yarn.